So okay. welcome everybody to the final executive meeting uh, ever, as the council moves to a new committee structure after the elections. Yeah, this is the last executive committee meeting. Um, before I start, um, I just want to go through a few house rules. If anybody's got a mobile phone, if you'd be kind enough to either turn it off or onto silent, please. And if it rings during the meeting, you have to make a £10 donation to the Mayor's Charity. Um, second thing is, as people can see, there's a gentleman here uh, recording the uh, meeting. That's uh, following a request that the Council receive. And as, as councillors know, that the Council supports the principle of transparency. We encourage anybody that wants to come and record any meeting of this Council. Um, the only thing that I will say is that um, if any member of the public doesn't want their uh, face recording or if the people that are down to speak, if you don't want to be recorded, if you indicate to me when I ask you to speak, I'll ask the gentleman that's doing the recording to turn the recording off. Uh, councillors don't have that privilege, uh, it's only afforded to members of the public. Um, I've got three speakers on one item, I'll just make sure that those people are here. Uh, Ryan Hay? Yes. Okay, thank you Ryan. Jody Bannon, thank you. Uh, we did have Steve Cunningham, but Steve's unable to join us this evening and has uh, asked that Ben Metcalf be asked to speak on his behalf. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, I'll go through the formalities of the meeting first and then I'll, I'll, I'm going to move the agenda while it's item for anyway, so we'll deal with that there. My quote is um, Holt House Call, Community Asset Transfer Request. Uh, I've got three speakers. <coughs> Normally the council's rules are that I can only allow up to a maximum of five minutes between all three of you, but I shall be very liberal with that five minutes. All I'd ask the three speakers to do is that please, if somebody has said something that you were going to say, just don't repeat it for the sake of repeating. Um, Ryan, you're first on. <coughs> Thank you. Gold Football Club uh, operates and survives due to the tireless work of a small number of volunteers. Their time, unpaid, is invaluable and essential to the survival of the football club. It's a well-known fact that the club, despite their efforts, nearly went out of existence at the end of last year. And without the support of local businesses, would now not be the highest ranked local team behind the Burnley Football Club. The football club needs to be the master of their own destiny just to, just to survive. To rely on sponsorship and benefactors will only take the club so far. It doesn't allow any future planning beyond any intention of goodwill. The club needs to be, become self-sufficient, and with personal investment and correct management, I believe our plans are the only option forward. The plans submitted to the executive to debate are a vision. A vision of what could be achieved for people sat in front of me tonight, believing and truly supported community that is deprived of quality sporting facilities. Grassroots sports clubs and Con Football Club play a vital role in the local community. Not only do we help people stay fit and healthy, and help develop individual sporting ta talents. We also bring people from the local community together. Young people have the opportunity to meet new friends from different backgrounds, as well as providing parents with the opportunity to meet with other parents who they may otherwise not have met. Anyone who has ventured up Harrison Drive on a Saturday morning will be more than aware of how high the junior section is, re is represented. Teams that play home games away from Kong, only due to the lack of suitable amenities. Tens of thousands of children's adults will pass through our club and use the facilities. They almost have the opportunity to develop, develop through sport and education. Grassroots sports clubs can offer so much more than just the sporting activity they are involved in. Go <coughs> Football Club and myself personally envisage that the club, with the proposed development, will become vital to the community through, through not just sport, but also we believe we can play a, a part within the educational system. Conniff as a sports club must have appropriate facilities and equipment to allow young people to strive. So, why have we asked for an asset transfer? In simple terms, security. To, de to develop the land comes at a cost. If we're being honest, the utility old stadium as it stands today is hardly fit for purpose. As an asset on the balance sheet, I suspect its current value is, is zero. The land it stands on, yes, this has a potential value but not to Con Football Club. The council have already been made aware that we are willing to include any assurances they require that ensure that we as a club cannot sell the land. Even in the event that the club become bankrupt, only the buildings would sit as an asset of the football club. The freehold would revert back to the council. It will be debated that a long-term lease of 99 years or 125 years is by definition in all aspects an asset transfer. 
I, di I disagree. A lease is a lease. A lease, by definition, comes with a landlord. Whether the landlord is proactive at this moment or in time is irrelevant. Leaseholders are always at risk. Cone FC being allowed the free owned gives us control of the management of these facilities. Leases are drawn up by the legal, like by the legal profession, they say for the protection of all. In reality, if leaseholders don't fulfil the terms of their lease, for example, improvements or modifications without written, written consent, then the lease can be forfeited. And this would not happen today, as I said, the value of the buildings is zero. My concern, and that of the community, is that we would, that would not be the case with a higher projected value. Instead, the asset would, would have more value on the open market than its ground rental income would warrant. Those who buy these assets see them as something to be monetised. To a council who openly admits it is feeling the pinch from government cuts, this, with a change of policy or opinion, could easily prove a temptation too hard to resist. I stress this, und under the proposed caveats, is not requested from Colin FC within the asset transfer, but interestingly, <coughs> remains open to the council on any lease provision. At least provision. The executive will know that the council recommendation of 125-year lease. This offers no long-term security to Colin Football Club, and is, is also completely opposite to the, lux to the luxury afforded to many other community schemes when they have applied for the same security. On a lease, the club would, be, would also be able to draw down any lending from the banks on a new stadium, should we believe it is necessary in the short or long term for our continued development. Without a positive result here, I do fear that the mere existence of the club is in serious jeopardy. Personal investment would therefore be impossible. I asked would I rent a house and demolish and rebuild? No, I would not. I class myself as an investor, but an investor in Cone Football Club and Cone as a community. I call on you to give us this chance to strive. The progression of Cone Football Club and the community is in your hands. I trust you will make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Jordy. Um, <coughs> my name is Jody. I'm the Managing Director of uh, Pro Sport Education. Um, we were brought on board by Cone and Ryan and to deliver the education programmes from uh, the site. Um, that includes a 16 to 19 uh, football education programme that's going to be starting in September. Um, as of now, um, those facilities are fit for purpose for, for a small uh, football programme. Um, but the plans that we had when we initially discussed it was that we were going to help the wider community working within alternative provision. So providing uh, facilities uh, and education for hard to reach demographics such as 14 to 16 year olds that aren't uh, engaging with mainstream education. Uh, we have case studies over in Warrington uh, where we work predominantly in, over in Cheshire East in, in Crewe, Congleton area, um, where the programmes that we've got and the pathways that we develop from 14 to 16 provision into traineeships, um, back to work, work skills courses, um, <coughs> principles of coaching, work skills courses, uh, traineeship courses. Um, getting people work ready into apprenticeships um, and hopefully employment. So we do a lot of work around engagement um, of, of a tough demographic. Um, so that's the kind of partnership that we're looking to forge um, forward with, with Cone, only if obviously we can get these facilities pushed through. Okay. Pretty much. Ben? <coughs> I'll keep this short because Ryan covered quite a bit, but. A question I'd like you all to ask is, if you had a business, and would you invest in a large amount of money in something that has nothing or no value whatsoever? The current ground, as Ryan said, is it's a wreck. It's as far as we, we will go with the ground as it is, and many of you have, have already said that. Um, <coughs> sorry, but I'm expecting to speak to you. There's over 200 kids that come up to the club on a Saturday morning and see their faces time and time again when we're getting told that it's off or they've got to play their away games elsewhere or we've, we've had to give up our reserve team because they were playing in Appington or the first team were training in Appington or the youth team were playing in Burnley. That's not calm and that's not what calm football club's about. We've got a businessman here who's passionate about the club and wanting to redevelop it and make it something special, something that hasn't been seen in calm before. Yeah, the Dynamo's had something special but that was one man. Ryan's got a backing, a, a committee behind him that is willing to support and help him. We can't want to get promoted in the foreseeable future and we can't prog progress because the ground isn't good enough or the facilities aren't good enough. Where do we go? The manager leaves, the players leave, fans will disappear, then the club will disappear, then the, count then the council will end up with a land back, £100,000 to, uh, 
to, to take the stadium away to make it safe so people can just walk the dog there. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and angry. Uh, back in 2004, nearly 2,000 people came to Colm to watch a game. How good would it be for <coughs> Colm to get promoted and for the town to see that again? For the restaurants to be full because of visiting fans. We all know as fans that when we go away, we go to the pubs, we enjoy it. Colm could benefit from that if you give us the opportunity. If it's in our game this season, our team is made up of local young talent with an average age of 20. Taking players from, from professional professional teams that have been cast aside and we're giving them the opportunity to play football and do something that they will alongside working. All we ask for is that opportunity to continue. Thank you very much um, to all three speakers. Very succinct and points. I appreciate that on behalf of the executive. I'll bring other speakers in as they, as they want to speak, but uh, I'll, I'll start off. Um, first of all, can I just uh, dispel a myth? I mean, I... Uh, I've been on the Colm Football Club website uh, yesterday and read some of the comments from, I don't know who's put them on, but where it says that the council is refusing to back your plans. I'm sorry, I take exception to that comment because the council hasn't made a decision. The report that's before committee tonight is a report from our officers and the officers are paid officers to make a recommendation to the executive. The executive can either agree with those recommendations or we can disagree with them and, you know, for... for stuff to go on social media as well saying that the council or the executive is blinkered um, in terms of making a decision. I want to categorically state that I'm leader of this council and I think I can speak on behalf of all three group leaders that are here in the room tonight that this council has a proud record of working with our sports clubs whether they be professional or non-professional and I certainly value the work that volunteers do uh, in this borough to make sure that sport thrives and you go to other parts of the country, there's not that army of volunteers. So I certainly respect that and congratulate those people that are working to, in, in the purpose of tonight at Cone Football Club. Um, there was a, a previous discussion back in 2013 around the same issue. The discussions uh, happened then and the lease was extended to the 99 year rule. Now I hear what, what certainly yourself, you said Ryan, um, in terms of where the club wants to go, and I welcome that uh, as leader of my particular group, and no doubt on behalf of the council as well. But uh, I think to to come to the executive tonight and have a public meeting a few days before, that which I certainly wasn't too late, I don't know whether other members of the executive were or not, um, doesn't certainly help me come to an opinion. So what I'm going to uh, suggest to council on the executive tonight is that we do not make a decision tonight one way or the other. What we agree to do is defer the decision allow all political groups to have a, an input because the one thing I don't want to happen with Cone Football Club is that it becomes a political football. Hence the reason I'm opening the invitation up to the Conservative Party as well to sit round the table on behalf of the Council and other interested bodies. So if for example you think some of your funding bodies would benefit from that conversation and that input, I'm happy to host that meeting uh, as leader of the Council because what I want to do is when the decision is made that we take into account all the factors that both obviously benefit the club benefit the people that live in that area and thirdly benefit the council so I'm deliberately putting the council at the bottom of that particular wish list the council has no desire uh, to turf corn football club out of there so we can uh, as some people have said allegedly go and sell it for housing I've certainly no intention of doing that and I'm sure none of the other groups have as well what I, what I don't want to happen is that any of our sporting groups and organisations have made a political to football for the purposes of politics that's not what sport should be used for in Certainly not in this borough. So in terms of moving the, the discussion forward tonight, I'm going to move councillors that we defer the item to the next meeting, which won't be the executive, but will be the new policy and resources committee, where, and before that, we have a meeting, a, a cross-party meeting, along with representatives of the club and anybody else that they feel is valuable to the contribution. And we can then all come to an informed discussion and decision, which will benefit everybody. But let me reiterate, the council are happy to be a party to that discussion. We will not come and rule the roost of the football club. Thank you. Sorry, Joe. Um, thank you, thank you, Bob. Um, I'm here to speak as the ward councillor where Cornet sits, but also as somebody who has had, um, well, have had a relationship with Cornet FC for a number of years, getting all the way back to when it was Cone Dynamos. Uh, I can remember when Cond Animals was up and going and we were top of the HFS Loans League and, and we were pushing forward and we were going to get promotion to the 
what was then the Vauxhall Conference, and it all came to a grinding halt. Part of the reason it came to a grinding halt was the stadium wasn't fit for purpose. And that was in the what, early 90s. And with all due respect to the volunteers here, and it's about the hours and hours of work they give every single week, it's still basically the same stadium. And if it wasn't good enough in the early 90s, it certainly isn't good enough in the middle of 2018. I'm trying to know what year it was. Uh, I'm under no doubt that uh, the council should be uh, on, on similar issues like this, whether it would be Con FC, I know you've also got Con FC and Rugby Club uh, on, on the same report. I would ask to transfer the, commu the uh, former clubhouse at a whole house to, to the Rugby Club in a heartbeat. You know, they have invested a huge amount of funding in there, a huge amount of man hours, and the council doesn't need to put on the building. It's got a brand new uh, pavilion next door to it. It doesn't need to have ownership of the other one. But that's, that's the Club. the football club, again, I'd be surprised if the council's put any money in it in the last few years, if not even the last decades. The council isn't the, old, the only, aren't the uh, sole, the council is not the only, only way to, to guarantee the future of our community assets. There are other ways that we can ensure that these assets are there for the benefit of the people they are supposed to serve. And that doesn't necessarily have to be under the umbrella or the name or the ownership of a council. We can entrust the community themselves, like, like football clubs, like rugby clubs, to take on some of that workload. And I would urge, uh, if you're going to defer it, fine. Uh, we'll have this debate, no doubt, in May. But I'll be saying exactly the same thing to you in May, which is get out of the club's way, support them, but give them the asset transfer. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you, Chairman. I thought uh, <coughs> uh, colleagues in Colne would be uh, commenting. I, 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 I have got a couple if you want to. I did, but you put your hand up to quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than, uh, more than happy to give away. I, I, what prompted me to uh, put my hand up was some of the comments that, that Councillor Cooney has just made. And um, I, I'll just say a bit about that uh, at this point because I remember back um, to the days when we bent over backwards uh, to facilitate Con Dynamo's growing when, when Talkie White was, was uh, back in the club. And um, there were there was a huge amount of work done in trying to create uh, a new uh, base for the club, uh, one that would be fit for the for the higher leagues, uh, with much better access uh, and much better facilities. And uh, as Joe said, um, it, it well it all came to a crashing halt um, with. Um, uh, I, I don't know what I, what I should say, with the demise of the, the principal backer. Um, so, in a sense, mm -hmm. still alive. We've, well, all right, he's still alive, but financially, he, he, yeah, I don't want to go any further down that road. Um, but in a sense, we, we, we've been here before, and um, certainly in respect to Van Oswick Town, where I'm much more familiar, um, you know, we've facilitated their aspirations to go up into higher leagues and uh, provided uh, the, 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 the circumstances where they can thrive as well. Um, I just wanted to pick up as well upon this point that uh, Councillor Cooney says uh, the council hasn't put any money into the ground for the last few years. Well, no, uh, Councillor Cooney was in that chair where you're sat now in August 2013 when we did agree a community asset transfer of the uh, all tax facilities to Colne FC for 99 years on a peppercorn but the terms of that lease which Councillor Cooney supervised were uh, that the club were taking responsibility for the facilities. So I, I don't really think that that's a great argument to, to use in this discussion because um, you know that's what the club wanted. They wanted the, the responsibility. Um, they got it. Pepcorn lease. To my mind, a lease is um, a long lease like that is as good as ownership. I, I, I don't understand that bit. 
But um, uh, I think there are wider issues arising from uh, the uh, proposals that have been put forward that I think we need to look at. So I don't disagree with what you're suggesting. Paul? Yeah, um, first of all, I just want to say I think it's unfair for c the current Colm FC committee to be cast in the shadows of a previous benefactor of the club and then to be, um, well, the, uh, the, to be over cautioned because it hasn't worked out before. That was a completely different person, a completely different club, and a completely different setup. So I think we have to be very careful not to um, compare it to that. I also think the Diamond Rose was a different story. Um, the, these guys are planning for hopefully being in that position in years to come rather than getting to that point and it being a crunch point and then searching for somewhere else. I think these guys are really planning ahead and that should be something to look on favourably. I think we should be careful as a council that we're not getting into the situation where if an asset is of value, we're holding on to it and if it isn't, we're willing to transfer it. And we have been willing to transfer other things and I just had a question about... Um, one other facility that I know pretty well, but I'm not sure on what terms it was transferred. In terms of Troy and Community Centre, when that was transferred to their local community, can anybody remember what terms those were? Yeah, it was. Which one, sir? Yeah. Sorry, I'm begging your pardon for butting in. Um, it was transferred in exactly the same way as community centres have been transferred to town and parish councils. Is that free? In other words, I think the free was transferred. Yeah. Um, so it but, can be. Uh, but, I mean, from their point of view, it wouldn't really matter because that building won't last 99 years anyway. But um, the important thing about it is that it, it was. That they are, oh, Mr. Mosdell is not here, he knows. It's a community interest company, I think. So it is different. The structure of the company is different from an ordinary private company. It consists of a large number of members rather than um, shareholders. That's the difference. So, and therefore, it was thought it was a community <coughs> organisation, even though they want it to be a limited company. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, one thing I just want to make clear before I, I, I say anything else on this, I think. Uh, I would be right in saying that I don't think there's anyone in this room who doesn't want the club to prosper and, and, and doesn't want the, you know, the football club to carry on uh, in Colm and, 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 and carry on improving and, and going ahead all the time. Uh, and from the youth aspect and the junior aspect of the, the junior teams up there, it's phenomenal what they're doing up there because... It's finding some of the kids something to do. It's an interest. They're learning how to play football. If they weren't doing that, they'd be on the street. And, well, we all know what they'd be doing, don't we? Uh, so it's, it's an asset to the area, having that facility there. And as I said, I don't think there's anyone in this room, really, who doesn't want the club to prosper. Uh, but what we've also got to consider, and if you go back 30, 40 years, when it worked down was, there were problems on estate then with traffic and parking uh, and I know Ryan's come up with the idea about putting an extra access in which, which is a brilliant idea, it does need another access in because at least then they could go in one way and come out another and, and things don't get choked up the same. So I think that is, is a good idea and I think there's a lot of good ideas in what he's come forward with. but. What I think we've got to be mindful of is 30 years ago there was a lot of upheaval from residents when the animals wanted to make all sorts of improvements up there and there were public meetings where residents kicked up a fuss and there were all sorts of confrontation between the club and the residents. We don't want that to happen again and if we are going to go forward with this and I know Ryan wants to do and as I said I have no, no problem with the, the club prospering whatsoever. But if it is going to prosper, and there's going to be more traffic up there, and there's going to be development up there, and extra people going up there, we need to get it right for the club's benefit and the benefit of all the residents who live up there. Now, you've moved, Chairman, that we defer it and bring it back to May. Uh, now, I'm quite happy to second that, that we do defer it, 
but I don't think we want to, if you pardon the pun, we don't want to be kicking this into long grass until May. We certainly need to have a meeting with Ryan and the rest of them from up at that club before May. There's some urgency about this because they want to prosper and move forward and it must be, well, I don't know, Ryan might tell me I'm wrong, I don't know, but it must be thick end of a year since you came to, to us with some, some plans yeah, right. and, and, and you came into town hall here in Nelson, you presented the plans and, and we had a look at it and nothing seems to have happened since then, you know, and then all of a sudden it, it's in front of us again. Uh, what I would like to ask through you, Chairman, if I can ask Ryan a question. There was a presentation that he did up at the club, I believe, on Tuesday. Uh, I don't think any of the members of the exec were invited to it. Uh, what I would like to ask you, was there anything in that presentation that you gave on Tuesday that hasn't already been sort of given as information to the council, to the executive? No, the presentation on Tuesday were, were purely for the benefit of the, the supporters and the fans to let them know what we were trying to do. Well, what I would like to ask through you, Chairman, is if we do have a meeting, and, and I, I think we're going to be going down that road before May, or two meetings if we need to do, with a couple of members from each political party, plus some representation from the club, would you be kind enough to bring that presentation to us and give us that presentation so that we're not missing out on the trick anyway? Not a problem. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might want to say something later, Chair, and it depends what everybody else says. Captain Reeves. Thank you, Chair. Um, can, can I say, it's probably my fault, but I've I, I realised in the last two or three days that uh, um, the, the, the plans, the, the vision and the rest of it which have been put forward here, I've come to new. Um, I don't know how it's passed me by in the last uh, month since it was first put forward. But, uh, which seems to be quite a few months, but um, um, I thought that the argument tonight was basically about leasehold or freehold. I don't think it is. I don't think that's what we're talking about at all, actually. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute. <laughs> Can I just declare some interest, really? First of all, I am a passionate fan of non-league football. Um, which I think is a wonderful institution and I really want Cohen to be part of it. Um, some of you know that I'm a lifelong supporter of Bradford Park Avenue and uh, I don't want Bradford Park Avenue to go down but I hope we'll be playing you fairly soon that you've caught us up because uh, I don't think we're going up much further. Um, however, um, that, that, that's my first thing to say. And I've been to presentations there about new stadiums and all the rest of it quite recently. And I have to say that uh, I think it's all pie in the sky. Um, never mind. The vision now before us is, I think, what we should be discussing this evening. And I think it's what some of us at least want to discuss with the club in the very near future. Because it's not just a question of um, the nature of the land ownership. It's about lots of other things as well. And as David has said, I think on these other things, I think we've got to get them right. I have said several times in the last few days that Pen and, and I stand by this, Pendle is perhaps the most generous, certainly one of the most generous, one of the most generous local authorities, councils in the north of England in relation to its non-league clubs. Uh, and I'm just horrified by what happens in some of the places. Kings Lynn may not be in the north of England, but they were in the um, Northern League. And Kings Lynn United, as some of you will know, went bust and went out of existence because creditors were demanding money from them, including the council, including the council demanding back rent that hadn't been paid. And I had a discussion with one of the members of that council, not my party, but I had a discussion with him, and said, what on earth are you doing? And he said, oh, they're a business like any other, and they must be treated the same. And I said, that is not the way 
in which we think about these things in Pendle, and it's not the way we're going to think about these things in Pendle. Um, we disagree. However, the council isn't just here to support football clubs. It's here to represent the whole community and to look after the interests of the whole community. I mean, when people say, oh, the council want it for this, it's not the council at all. We represent the community. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. Um, and if we get that wrong, we're not doing our job properly. Um, and so I think we have to look at the thing as a whole. So first of all, I, say I don't think the issue on the agenda is leasehold or freehold. Uh, I think um, what we ought to be doing is looking at the fundamental things, what you need. I can speak to the club chair, apart from you, not what you need. Um, and, um, and I think that decision then will just come out automatically. Um, and we need to understand, on, on that particular decision, we need to understand each other. Because I think people have been saying things to each other and there's not been much communication. And so what we need to do is to say, what do we actually want to safeguard in the future? And what, what, why do people want this or that? And, and go back to the fundamental issues and then talk through the implications and perhaps talk through some actual scenarios, if that's the word. Say, what happens if? What happens if? What happens if the club is super successful and wants to move? What happens if the club goes out of existence? What happens in other circumstances? And what difference would it make? And if we do that, I think we'll come to an agreement. And I don't know what that will be. but so, so I think the bigger strategic and policy issues we need looking at first. We've got some information on these plans, and I must say, um, I actually looked at the club's website this afternoon, which I should have done before, um, and there's a bit more information there in, in, on, on what we've been given. But I think we need a lot more information. If we are going to support you in the vision that you've got for Hold House, I think we need a lot more information than we've actually got. You need to get it right. We need to get a general agreement for where it's going in the future between all of us so that we know. And I talk about the long term. Now, non-league football, in my view, 20 or 30 years is long term, but people might be beyond that. But um, everything in non-league tends to be so short term. Clubs go out of existence, they go zooming down, they go zooming up. Somebody brings along £5 million, £25 million, or whatever it is, and the club goes zooming up and it goes zooming down. And uh, it all happens very quickly. And even on grounds, if you look at clubs across the north of England, what's happening where their grounds, what has happened to their grounds, things happen very quickly. And grounds you think are going to be there forever disappear. Look at Darlington. Um, and, and they're in real trouble now with the ground. Um, now, Pendle is about to start carrying out an audit and a consultation right across Pendle on future leisure, sport and recreation facilities in the borough, and it's going to happen later this year. Now, the timescale of that will perhaps be too long for you, but ideally, we need to have some ideas, some clear ideas of where Hold House is going, let alone come football club, where Hold House is going as part of that process. And so we need to feed that into our process. And the other thing I would say on, 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 on uh, similar things is that we, i.e. the council, as Councillor Wick said, have been here before with Cone Dynamos. I know some people have been saying recently that it was the council's fault that the dynamos ended up as they did. That's absolute nonsense, I'm afraid. Uh, we put a huge amount of time and effort in, and I was personally involved in it, in trying to find a location for the dynamos to build a, uh, and they were wanting to build up a stadium for 10,000 seated people, which is a bit more than uh, you're talking about, I think. But um, we looked at hotels. And as Councillor Clegg said, there was a general agreement that that was too big for Holt House anyway, and it wouldn't work there. We looked at Swindon playing fields in Nelson, and we got it horribly wrong. 
because what happened down there is the way it was done, and it's part of my fault and other people. Um, the residents on Hodge House Estate rose up in revolution against having a, you were probably behind it, I don't know, um, rose up in revolution about having a, I mean some of them objected to it being called Cone, but that was a different matter. Um, and we had a site visit down there in which two councillors were assaulted by some of the residents, I mean assaulted. So it got nasty and we've got to avoid that kind of thing happening. We've got to learn the lessons of the past. So the questions the council needs to consider very quickly, Chair. One, we need an overall policy on the future use of whole house playing fields for sporting <coughs> purposes, not just the half of it that you want, but we need to where we're going on other things in my view. Second, we need to ask the question from a planning point of view, because we're a planning authority, and we need planning permission for what we want to do, and how stupid it would be to go ahead now with vision without an understanding of the planning problems that might have to be faced. Is the vision for Holt House that is possessed by Cone, FC, and possibly others acceptable from a planning point of view, including the access that Councillor Clegg referred to, and if there are problems, can we think about them and find solutions to them now, and not just wait down the road? You've invested a lot of money there and suddenly come to a halt because of planning problems. Not a good idea, not a good way to proceed. So let's look at it now. Is the future of the whole of Holt House as some kind of sports hub or sports village, uh, which might include other sports as well when funding comes along in the future? It seems to me that if you're going to do what you're proposing to do here, then the rest of that land isn't going to just stay as green playing fields as they are now. It's somebody at some stage in the future is going to come along and say, well, let's have this facility, let's have that facility, let's, have, let's build an indoor tennis, or whatever it might be. Who knows? None of us know. Um, I mean, the, the, the place I think, thought of, I, you'll have been to Curzon Ashton, uh, uh, the Thameside Stadium, and Ashton Delon, many of you, um, which is in the middle, really. It's quite a nice new ground, and it's in the middle of um, a lot of other facilities. So, how much parking is needed? Should the parking be joint parking for the facility? Uh, how should we plan that for the future? And what does it mean for access? So, I, I think we ought to be thinking a bit beyond your vision as councillors and say, what's our vision for Hold House as part of our overall sporting vision for Pendle? What's, I, I think we need it clearly written down. What is the community benefit of what you're proposing? What you do now, what you hope to do in 12 months time, what you hope to do in five years time. Because it's that community benefit that uh, provides us with the justification for handing over public assets or um, finding other resources for you in the future. Um, and absolutely crucial to, to, to the operation of this land. And then there are the residents of the North Valley Estate. In my view, with the experience of the past and the experience of Hodge House, is that I would not be prepared to support this development at all unless the residents in that area have been consulted and hopefully brought along with it. Now, obviously, some of the residents are passionate supporters of your club, but not everybody. And I can remember. Uh, when we announced that we were looking at Swindon for Dynamos, uh, one of Pendle's finest councillors of the past, Councillor Ken McClay, who represented that area, stood up in the council chamber and said, actually, not everybody wants a football club on their doorstep. Because with the best one in the world, everywhere I go watching football to away games, if, there's, if it's anywhere near housing, there are conflicts. We're not going to be able to avoid the conflict. You're not going to be able to avoid the conflict. What we've got to do is to minimise them and to agree the way forward to make sure that the life of the residents around there, you know, when you've got to the stage where you're getting crowds of two, three thousand, not two, three hundred, um, are not 
in a position where um, I talk to people uh, around, the, around the Salford ground and they say, well, if Salford are at home, we go away for the weekend. Well, we don't want that kind of thing. Um, our answer as councillors is to find the best answer for everyone, um, including yourselves. I, I agree with you, Chair. I don't think we have enough information or a sufficiently clear shared vision yet. I think there's lots and lots of questions we want to ask you. Um, I think we want some advice we want to give you which uh, will help you forward. So I agree with the deferral, but I think it has to happen quickly. I think the meeting, the first meeting anyway, uh, when um, w w we isolate the questions, get down and, and say, what are the brass tacks that we want to talk about, um, should be pretty quick in the next fortnight before we all get, get, get tied up too much in elections and, and see where that takes us. But, um, you know, I mean, if all this happens, I might even come and watch you occasionally. You play a good football. Especially when you're playing Bradford. You know. so, well, I read the reports in the paper and, uh, and, and, and I look at the table. I look at the table this afternoon thinking, can they actually get into the playoffs? And yeah. clearly, uh, it's what my club would call the serious risk of getting into the playoffs. Because there's no way we could go up to the National League next year um, and survive. We'd do a North Thoroughly, so we don't want to go up. But you don't want to be in that position. You want to be in a position where you can challenge to go up and succeed, obviously. We can discuss league tables at the first meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so if members are happy, uh, Brian, can I just check in terms of contact with the club? Should we do that through yourself to arrange that first mm -hmm. meeting? Please, yeah. yeah. You've got the details. Yeah. That's fine. So, everybody happy with that course of action? Yeah. yeah okay. Thank can you very much. Can I just add to, to Tony's comments? Uh, and obviously, we'll go through. No, what you're not only allowed to, but I'll give you the last. No, one. It's only 22 seconds. We what what David played for before about the presentation that we did on Tuesday night. A lot of that covers some of Tony's points okay. with regards to where the community sat and what, right. what the benefits were. Subject three comes out. I'll look to arrange that first meeting as as Councillor as that's within the next 14 days. Okay. okay. You're more than welcome to stop for the rest of the meeting. And um, what well, people want to leave, I'll pause for a minute or so. Yeah. Not until <laughs> <laughs>